makes my heart come alive. Suddenly brought to life when I met you. Reaching beyond the skies, running deep, stretching wide. Perfect love realized here with you. Come on now. Now the sun is for real, you will never let go. Words love beyond my control, out of control What's up? This is real love, this is real love Say this is real love, this is real love Teach the Bible smoothly, so make sure you listen goodly. It's called the sermon, but you can call it whatever you want as long as you zip it and listen. God, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. You sent your one and only Son to come and save us from our sin. God, you are our superhero. You are everything. To us, and we cannot worship you and thank you and praise you enough. Help every boy, girl, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa that's listening today to hear your voice and hear your word, and help everyone that hears this message to be so thankful for who you are and what you've done. We love you, and your name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. What's up? Everybody, it's Pastor Kyle. I'm here again to talk to you about our sweet 16. That's right. We're going through the 16 things we believe after we read 
the Bible. It's really awesome, and we've had a whole lot of fun so far. And I'm excited to learn with you two new truths today. Um, We already learned, uh, number one, that all scripture is inspired by God. Then we learned that we believe after reading the Bible in the one true God. And then even last week, we additionally learned the third truth, which is the deity of Christ. We believe that there was one true God and that Jesus was God. He was fully man, but he was also fully God. That's how he lived a perfect, sinless, blameless life. And that's how he was able to rescue us from our sins. So we're going to learn our new truths. Those were truths that we already learned. They're still true. Don't forget, okay? Those were truths we already learned, though. Right now, we're going to learn our new truths. Say that, new truths, new truths. It's kind of like a tongue twister. (laughs) All right, we believe in, ready? It's kind of, it's kind of, it's bad news. I didn't want to tell you this. It's it's like really bad news that the, the... the fourth truth. But actually, we're going to learn even to um, so go- some good news, too. So it's like it's like it's like bad news, good news. You, you know, when someone says that, you know, they're like, hey, um, I got some good news and I got some bad news, you know, and you have to say, like, what do you want to hear first? <sighs> well, this next truth, I'm going to give you some bad news. But the following truth, I'm going to give you some good news. That's actually what we're going to call this message here today. I'm going to call it bad news, good news. And that good news is the gospel. It's what we talk about all the time, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But let's uh, move forward. I'm going to give you the bad news, okay? If you if you need to get ready, prepare yourself, buckle your, your seatbelt in, all right? Here's some bad news. We believe in the fall of man. Now, what that means is not some man fell down and stubbed his toe or something. No, we believe, after reading the Bible, that we're sinners. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means you've sinned. That means you've sinned. That means you've sinned right there. That means you've sinned. And that means that I've sinned. And we all need help. We're fallen. We're, we're stuck. We're enslaved to our sin without this good news. It's really good news. It's so good. <laughs> it's really good. Do you want me to tell you the good news? I'll tell it to you right now. And it is our next truth, our fifth truth, which is we believe in the salvation of man. We believe that man, us, everyone in the world, all human beings can be saved through Jesus Christ who paid the punishment, the penalty of our sins. That's what we believe. So it's bad news that we fell, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but it's good news that God sent his only son, Jesus, to die for us, to take the penalty, the punishment of our sin. Those are our truths today. It's bad news and it's also some good news. I want to go over our Bible verse today. I bet some of you have heard of it. I already said uh, one of the first verses in what we call as Christians, the Romans road. The Romans road is a big, uh, uh, lots of several passages of scripture from Romans uh, that teach us about salvation. We know we just went through the books of the Bible series and we know that Paul, that really smart guy, wrote the book of Romans to teach the Roman church what it really meant to be saved and love Jesus and follow him. But I said Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm going to say Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23 clearly says, the bad news, it gives you the bad news first, but then it gives you the good news. This is what Romans 3, or 6.23 says. It says, 
for the wages of sin is death. Uh oh. Oh, but we need to keep reading, right? We get to the good news. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Wow. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what Jesus wants for us. That's what Jesus wants to to give us. I'm really happy about that. And I hope you are too. But let me let me say that verse again though. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That means what we get for sinning is death. We we deserve death. But because Jesus died for us, we don't deserve that anymore because Jesus took that punishment for us. And now through Jesus, through what he did for us on the cross, we can have eternal life. That's awesome. That's our memory verse for today. So go and do like Psalms 119.11 tells us to and hide God's word in our hearts so we might not sin against him. Let's learn our big idea. Our big idea is something we say uh, when our parents ask us, Hey, uh, 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 little little Johnny, uh, wh- what did you learn in church today? You can not be nervous and be like, I don't know. Um, no, you can tell them something. You can tell them something that sounds really smart, and they'll be like, wow, they were listening. I'm going to give them a cookie later because they're a really good kid. Okay, not promising any cookies or brownies. Okay, but you need to learn this big idea. It's really important. This is our big idea for today in our message, Bad News, Good News. It, it, it goes like this. We messed it up, but God fixed it up. It's really simple. It's really simple. Can you do like this? You know, like you're blocking something, you know, or protecting yourself. It's like an X. It's like, uh uh-oh, no good. Ready? We messed it up, but God fixed it up. That's the the big idea right down there. That's what it says. You can read it along. Let's, Let's do it together. Let's I'll do it, and then you repeat after me what I do. Are you ready? Are you sure? Because you don't look ready. You, right there? You you don't look ready. Get ready. Okay. All right. Here we go. We messed it up, but God fixed it up. (laughs) Two thumbs up. (laughs) All right. Let's do it again. Uh, I'll do it, then you do it. Ready? We messed it up, but God fixed it up fixed it up. Awesome. Awesome. One more time. Do it really loud this time. Okay. Like really loud. Like after I say it, I want you to scream it on the top of your lungs. Okay. And, and really believe it and do the actions and everything. Ready? Here we go. We messed it up. (laughs) You can get a, a little bit louder. Okay. We messed it up. But God fixed it up. Awesome job. That's our big idea. When your parents ask you, what did you learn in church today? What did you learn in E-Kids? You can tell them, we messed it up, but God fixed it up. And you can tell them about the Romans road, about how everybody has sinned. And how because we've sinned, our wages are death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Just like it says in Romans 6, 23. <laughs> yes, it does. Hey, I want to tell you a Bible story. I want to tell you a Bible story that I bet a lot of you guys have heard already. But I want to tell it to you in a, in a dramatic way. I'm going to play all the characters. There's not many characters in this Bible story because there weren't many people when this Bible story even happened. I'm going to tell a story about the first sin. The first time anybody ever disobeyed God. That's what sin is. Sin is disobedience to God. It's no good. Um, But it's the story of Adam and Eve. You can read about it in Genesis. In fact, if you have your Bibles right now, you can open them up and see in Genesis, uh, in, in the first couple of chapters, this story play out of God first creating the world 
He created everything we see, everything we touch, smell. And then he created man. He created us. He created man and then took a rib from Adam and then created woman. And they were together in the garden. It was great. It was paradise. I like to think of uh, the garden, the Garden of Eden where they were as this like great, great, incredible place with waterfalls. But like the water is like Kool-Aid, you know? like wild cherry kool-aid mm, mm. and then like everything tastes so good i love fruit already right in this garden there were trees everywhere and they were abounding the most perfect fruit ever and then vegetables oh yummy yummy in my tummy i love fruits and vegetables i eat them like every day they taste so good and they make me feel so good and that's what god put all over this garden and he put man adam and woman eve in the garden and he said you know take dominion over this land you got it it's all yours but there's one thing i don't want you to do Adam and Eve were like, uh, okay, all right, God. They were walking with God. They were with God. They said, God, what, what don't you want us to do? God said, see that tree over there in the middle of the garden? It's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And I don't want you to eat the fruit from that tree. Don't eat anything from that tree because if you do, you will surely die. Adam and Eve were like, what's death? Huh? What? They didn't even know what death was because it was perfect. It was a perfect world. Animals didn't eat each other. No one was killing each other. There was no sin, no disobedience. But they decided to listen to God. They were like, no, we're, we're not going to go eat from that tree. We're not going to do it even though God gave Adam and Eve free will to do what they wanted. If they wanted to disobey God, they could. See, God didn't want robots to say, Yes, master, we will not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. No, <laughs> that'd be pretty weird if you just created a robot to love you. No, he gave Adam and Eve and all of us free will to either obey God or not obey God. Eve was all alone in the garden. My name's Eve, and I'm a pretty little girl. I'm the most beautiful girl in the world. Because I'm the only girl in the world. Oh. Well, isn't that great? Isn't that something? Yeah. It was awesome, and it was great. But then Eve, oh, she, she saw something up in the tree. She saw something. It was a snake. And it was actually the devil manifesting himself as a snake, showing himself as a snake to tempt Eve. And that serpent, that snake, was in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The craziest thing was that serpent started talking, said, Why do you not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? And Eve was like, Well, like God told us not to. So he said that if we like ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that we would like die. And I don't even really, can't even understand what that even means. But I figure it sounds like bad. So I'm like, better not. And the devil said, Eve, God only told you that because he does not want you to be as smart as God. If you eat of the tree, you will know of both things good and evil. That's my best devil voice. <laughs> and Eve was like, she, she was like over here. She was like, Okay. And she took from the food. And it made her feel really bad. It tasted good at first, but it made her feel really bad. She brought it to Adam 
said, hey, um, can you eat this too with me? Because I ate it and now I'm kind of scared and I don't really know what to do. And um, uh, a snake told me to do it. And Adam was like, what, a snake? You talking to a snake? He was like, yeah, but can you just eat it, please? And see what it tastes like? Because I kind of feel kind of funny. I think I have food poisoning. I don't know. And Adam ate it too. Adam and Eve both, both disobeyed God. It was the first sin. And because of that sin, because man sinned, they were separated from God. But that's not how God designed the world to work. That's not what God intended. God intended to have a relationship with you. Before that, God was literally walking with man on earth. They had a personal one-on-one -on -one connection. It was great. But because of man's imperfection, because God is perfect, and in order to have a relationship with God, you have to be justified through Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ, we are made perfect white as snow. But until then, we are separated from God. But how does that even work? How does it even work when, when we're this thing that used to be white, but is now stained and covered in sin? I got this little handkerchief. People blow their nose in these and it's disgusting, but gets kind of dirty after a while. I don't even know what this brown stuff is. <laughs> Maybe kind of chocolate or something. I don't know. But sin stained the world. It stained us. I have this, uh, this empty uh, bag here that I, I want to show you. Uh, it's, it's interesting, but uh, if you look carefully right in there, you'll even see uh, there's actually a a zipper right here you can see all the way through and uh, this is going to represent us this handkerchief I have right here that's covered in in sin and if you're watching carefully all we have to do to be cleansed of our sin is three things we have to ask believe and confess of our sins. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ask God to forgive us. Believe he died for us. And confess Jesus Christ is Lord. And when we do that, okay, when we do that, God cleanses us. He makes us righteous. And when we mean it, when we live for him, Jesus takes us and he makes us A, a brand new creation. He makes us completely spotless, blameless in his sight, and justifies us through the power of Jesus Christ. That's what I want you to experience today. Hey, let's say a word of prayer right now. Bow your heads and close your eyes and believe this with me, that Jesus came here to die for us and wants a relationship with you. Even though we fell, he wants to give us salvation. Pray with me right now. Dear God, thank you so much for everyone listening right now. I pray that they would experience you and your son and ask your son to forgive them of their sins if they haven't already. God, we want to know you in a personal way and have a personal relationship with you. Thank you for what you did for us on the cross by taking the punishment of our sin. We messed up, but you fixed everything up. You did, and we love you for it. We praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. It was so good learning with you some more truth, and I can't wait to learn even more truth next week. Don't forget our truths, all right? You're not going to want to forget them because they're really important to remember. The first truth we learned today was the fall of man. That's what we believe in. That's the bad news. But we believe in the good news, which is the salvation of man, that God redeems us. He justifies us, and he makes us perfect, not through anything we've done, but by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. 
And don't forget our uh, our memory verse, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And our big idea when your parents ask you, hey, what did you learn in, in church today? Tell them, we messed it up, but God fixed it up. Hey, boys and girls, I'll see you next week for eKids Online. Bye!